If you want your research paper to be accepted by a journal, you need to conduct good research and have a well-written paper. Hi, this is Dr. Jia, and today I'm going to talk about the five biggest mistakes seen in academic writing. I'm not talking about surface-level advice such as avoid contractions in writing. Instead, I will be covering the fundamental mistakes seen in academic writing. Number one, not knowing the true goal of publishing your research paper. If somebody asks you, why do you publish your research work? Common answers are, I want to spread my ideas, I want to show my work. But there are plenty of ideas out there. Why should busy clinicians or researchers spend their time reading your research work? How does your paper provide value to the readers? When academics read research papers, they are really hoping to see if your work solves a problem, gives a new way of looking at things, or it provides a better way of doing things. So the goal of your research paper is to change the ideas or the behaviors of the readers. If your paper does not have any of these three elements, it is very difficult to convince your reviewers or the editors to accept your paper. Number two, not providing an argument. When I first heard about the research argument, I thought it meant disagreement between two research groups. But in research, argument means making a claim by providing evidence. These are the mistakes I've seen authors do. First, not making a claim. They are just stating the facts and stating the results, believing that it is more objective that way. But what ends up happening is that the readers will interpret the results however they want. And when that happens, the authors lose control of their narratives and lose credibility in their field. The opposite end is the authors are making a claim, but do not provide sufficient evidence to support the claim. Now, the research paper will appear unbalanced or worse, it may look like an opinion piece. And finally, not addressing potential objections to your research argument. I'm going to give you an example. A research study found that drug A improves sleep quality. But in the research field, it is well known that drug A causes diarrhea. If you do not address this issue, the readers and the reviewers are going to ask you how does the diarrhea affect the patient's sleep quality. Instead of sweeping this situation under the rug, it is better to anticipate the objections and questions and provide a counter-argument. An example of a counter-argument looks like this. Although 10% of the participants experienced diarrhea, they reported that diarrhea only occurred during daytime and they rated the diarrhea as mild. Mistake number three, editing only for grammar. So you read through your paper and there are no more red or blue squiggly lines. Or maybe you even paid for proofreading to check your grammar. Then the reviewers respond with, it is difficult to understand what the authors are trying to convey. Or the story lacks coherence. Perhaps the reviewers completely misunderstand the intention of your research paper. Why is this happening? This typically occurs because you have not done developmental editing. In fiction writing, developmental editing is often done to look for plot holes, missing pieces about the character. In nonfiction, developmental editing is done to make sure that your key message is conveyed clearly to your intended audience. So you need to ask, are you clear on who your audience is? Is your target journal in the general field or in a specific field? Are you making assumptions about what your audience knows? Are there any missing pieces in your scientific story? So make sure the key message is conveyed properly to your intended audience. If you liked the video so far, please give it a thumbs up. Mistake number four having multiple voices in a paper. What I mean is when you read a paper, it appears to have multiple people writing the paper. Don't get me wrong, most research is collaborative work. So it is expected to have multiple authors contributing to a manuscript. One author would write the introduction, another author would write the methods and so on. But because everybody has a different writing style, what you end up seeing is a patched up manuscript. And when a reviewer sees such work, the authors lose credibility. The lack of care in details make the reviewers wonder how careful they are in data collection or data analysis. So at the final stages of writing a manuscript, edit the paper as a whole to make sure there is one cohesive voice. Number five, too much telling and not showing. Let me give you an example. Understanding the mortality rate between the two groups is important. Now, you're only telling that your research is important, but the readers will have these questions. Why is it important? How? When is it important? For whom? So you need to show why this is important by giving examples. Understanding the different mortality rates between the two groups is important when determining the kidney transplantation criteria. 
Now, this statement provides a more concrete example of why your research is important and how your data can be used in a clinical setting. Now that you know the five fundamental mistakes in academic writing, click here to learn about the mistakes when you are referencing articles in your research paper. See you in the next video.